Hello and welcome to the Thursday, June 1st, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Last week I talked about how we saw some scans for Apache NiFi. Apache NiFi is described as a data orchestration suite. It's a pretty nifty software. It provides a web-based uh, interface and allows you then to read data from, let's say, S3 buckets, uh, Kafka, from uh, other uh, files and such, then process the data, which typically means filter it or converting it to a different format, like from JSON to XML or CSV and the like, and then save it back into, let's say, a database. So this is a feature that's often used as part of sort of a data ops uh, pipeline, like if you uh, have to manipulate business data, if you have to prepare data for machine learning, that's sort of a typical use case uh, for it. But, well, it's also being scanned for. And we talked about it last week that we saw some scans for it. Well, uh, we now set up actually a full NiFi install and exposed it to some of uh, these scans by configuring some of our honeypots to basically just proxy these requests. So the attackers saw an actual NiFi instance. What we saw were two kinds of attacks. First of all, crypto coin miners. There always has to be a crypto coin miner. And the second attack, a little bit uh, more nefarious in my opinion, and that was lateral movement, where the attacker was collecting SSH keys from the system, then figuring out what kind of SSH connections were implemented in the past are currently being implemented, for example, looking at bash history, looking at SH configuration files, and then basically just trying out different keys and seeing what works. This is not due to a vulnerability in NiFi. It's really just a bad configuration choice. When you first install NiFi, well, you have to set up a password for this web-based console. If you don't do this, then of course everything goes. And one of the features of NiFi is to define these data processors, where you basically define how data is manipulated. And to do that, well, you can upload your own scripts via their API. And that's exactly what the attacker did here. A little one-liner, just using curl, downloading a shell script, piping it to bash. That's really all the exploit has to do in this case. It only took, well, maybe a couple hours or so uh, for us to actually see uh, these attacks in our honeypot. So if you do have NiFi running in your environment, make sure it's adequately secured. Do not expose it to the internet. Of course, when I sort of was looking around for NiFi instances in the wild, well, many of them are hosted with uh, cloud providers. Microsoft's cloud seems to be a sort of a big location for NiFi. And uh, if you're putting it in the cloud, then of course, it becomes a little bit more difficult to restrict access. Definitely use a TLS. And that's actually sort of enabled uh, by default. You just have to load the right certificate, of course, and do set a strong password for authentication. And if you are using a gigabyte motherboard, you may have a problem in the form of a firmware backdoor that's implemented in this motherboard. The problem is that as you are booting your system, the UEFI, the firmware, will run a Windows executable as Windows boots and then download additional tools, possible updates for its firmware. Overall, this sounds like a nice thing to do to make it easy to update your UEFI firmware, which often isn't really all that easy, but that entire update process process is implemented insecurely. It uses in part HTTP, not HTTPS. And then also it does not use any cryptographic verification. So there is no hash or anything like this or digital signature uh, that's uh, being checked. This is currently not patched. According to Eclipsium, Gigabyte is working on a fix. If you wonder if your motherboard is affected, there is a long list that Eclipsium came up with. It's uh, three pages with three columns, so probably a couple of hundred uh, different models that are affected by this issue. 
And I'll link to the Eclipsium blog, which also has additional details about uh, what URLs are being requested and how to possibly protect yourself. And Baronis in a blog post is uh, talking about uh, Salesforce ghost sites. Apparently what's happening here is that organizations are setting up Salesforce sites and then, well, if they get sick of them, if they no longer want them, they're not actually deleting the site, but uh, they're deactivating it, which really means that there is no more DNS record for the particular host name for the site, but the site is still there. So an attacker knowing the IP address will just have to send a request with the right host header and then gain access to the site. And as Barone has discovered, a lot of sort of customer data, intellectual property is being leaked that way. And then finally, one vulnerability I want to cover today, that's CVE 2023-34152. It's a command injection vulnerability in Image Magic. Sadly, a library that had plenty of vulnerabilities like this. It's always uh, where you basically call an image magic tool and then pass parameters to it that are not properly sanitized. This is in particular an issue if you do use image magic, for example, uh, to modify files to change resolution and such as they were uploaded to a website. So if you're dealing with untrusted content, take a look at the details and see if uh, you are a particular vulnerable to this. There are a couple other vulnerabilities as well that are being addressed with this update. Well, that's it for today. Uh, thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.